and talk about the migrant crisis in the city right now because in the last two years, more than 170,000 asylum seekers have made their way here to New York City. And the cost of providing housing, food, services for the migrants has been mounting. Mayor Adams and the city officials have been calling on state and federal leaders to do their part in shouldering the cost. They want more money from them. But federal officials have not committed to the funds needed, and that's left the city to press the state for help. Joining us now is Melissa DeRosa. She served in state government as the top aide to Governor Cuomo, and she's the author of What's Left Unsaid, My Life at the Center of Power, Politics, and government. Melissa recently wrote an opinion piece in the Daily News about the migrant crisis and the lack of help coming from Albany. Good morning, Melissa. Thank you so much for joining us here on Good Day New York. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So, for lack of a better phrase, is this an issue that comes top down from the governor not providing enough help or the bottom up with the mayor not advocating for enough help? You know, it's a little bit of both. And, you know, just to be clear, it's not all Hochul's faults. This really starts at the top with Biden, right? Biden unilaterally reversed the Remain in Mexico policy, which was something that Trump did, which essentially said asylum seekers had to wait outside the United States pending their application because those applications can take 12, 16, 18, 24 months. But when Biden unilaterally did that, he didn't do it with a management plan to back it up. And essentially, you saw this crush at the border. And so then you saw the brilliance, evil brilliance, in my opinion, of governors like Greg Abbott in Texas, who said, you know what, New York, Illinois, Massachusetts, California, you guys are sanctuary states. Have a little taste of what we at the border have been dealing with. Starts putting the migrants on buses, on the airplanes, that famous chartered plane to Martha's Vineyard, and started sending them to places like New York City. And now we've had a larger influx of migrants since any point since World War II, and the city can't handle it. And so the problem is not of Eric Adams making. He's been unilaterally dealing with it essentially alone. And while I lay a lot of the blame at Biden's feet for not providing more management and resources, the city is a subdivision of the state. And where is Kathy Hochul? I think we all acknowledge that this is a federal government problem. It's an interstate issue. But as you said, New York City is part of the state of New York. Right now, there are only five of the 62 counties that are actually accepting migrants, so a lot of the burden does come on the city. What more, though, can the state actually do? You know, look, this is part of a larger pattern with Kathy Hochul, where she's a very hands-off governor. She sort of runs away from problems. She doesn't ever run towards them. And that's why they pay you the big bucks, you know? You're in that job. It's a management role, first and foremost. It's not about cutting ribbons. It's not about the ceremonial aspects of it. But since day one, you know, the buses showed up to the Port Authority, which is a state-run by state facility. She was nowhere to be found. And you saw a lot of the counties around the state saying, not in my backyard, which is to be expected, right? That's what local politicians do. But that's why you have the governor to come over the top and say, you know what? It's not up to you. Okay, listen, you've been critical of Kathy Hochul, even in your book, What's Left Unsaid. <laughs> Uh, you wanted to get rid of her when she was on Andrew Cuomo's ticket. Yes. And he saved her. Yes. Okay. So, so now, are you being overly critical because you didn't like her back then? No, look, I'm being critical because I am a New Yorker and I'm a taxpayer. And New York City residents should be outraged that a, a migrant crisis, which is going to cost, you know, anywhere between 10 and $12 billion, depending on what Eric Adams is saying day to day, that the state is right now saying they're going to pay $2.4 billion. So that's a quarter or 20%, depending on the number you use, of the overall cost of the migrant crisis. The city has 40% of the population, over 50% of tax dollars to New York State come from New York City. So why is New York City alone shoulder? during this crisis. All right, so we, we called Kathy Hochul's office and they gave us a, a little bit of a response. The governor has allocated $4.3 billion towards the migrant crisis. The governor's initiatives to get migrants federal authorization to work have gotten thousands of migrants to submit work applications, including every single migrant being housed in New York City. The governor called on President Biden to grant work authorizations for Venezuelans. The president granted her request soon after. I mean, yes. 
that may have happened. But, you know, the Times still did a story today this morning. about this yep. morning, why a $25 million plan to relocate New York City migrant families is struggle, struggling. She has basically money to set, resettle 1,250 families across New York State and only 170 households qualify. Well, and the most infuriating part of that article, Rosanna, for those who haven't read it yet, is that Hochul State, Oper well, not her state operations director, her deputy, is quoted in the story saying, we're really upset the program isn't working. Okay, so it's your job to make it work. If you propose a program and there's issues with it, then it's your job to step in and manage the program. And that's what's been missing across the board. It's a money problem and it's a management problem. And right now the city has neither in terms of support from the state and the federal government. And city residents are shouldering all of this. And it's not fair. How does this happen? Not only you, you talk about the governor, but, I mean, the state legislature, you know, you look at the assembly leader, the Senate leader, they're all New Yorkers, New York City people, right. you, you know, know, representatives. And this is part of the problem because Eric Adams, I think that, you know, Eric Adams and Kathy Hochul have been tripping over each other to demonstrate publicly how well they get along. And that's great, but the people of New York want results. And sometimes you need a little bit of institutional tension, and maybe that's not always pretty, but sometimes you've got to say Eric Adams has to hold Kathy Hochul's feet to the fire. Kathy Hochul has to hold Chuck Schumer's feet to the fire. The Senate Majority Leader lives in Brooklyn, and yet we hear very little out of him in terms of funding that should come to New York. Now, he did put forth that bipartisan agreement in the U.S. Senate on border control, but it didn't go anywhere. Okay, great. So he did do something, but it didn't happen. So what are you going to do now? And everyone's bid to just sort of avoid tension and avoid conflict falls to the people who live and work in New York City. And so what they're doing right now is not only not productive, it's counterproductive. Mm -hmm. It's continuing to stick your head in the sand and not deal with the problem. I know you got to wrap it up, but I get one more. Okay, yeah. go ahead. You were top aide with former Governor Cuomo. Yes. Is he going to run for mayor? <laughs> Come on. That's a question for former Governor what Cuomo. What do you think he's going to do? Look, I think that two years later, after what happened, the majority of people look back and they see it as the railroading that it was. And I think that people genuinely miss leadership, competent leadership in this state. And I think that his government and political life is not over yet. And what are you up to these days? Consulting, writing, some commentary. You know, having okay. a good time. And here on Good Day New York <laughs> there with you go. us. Exactly. Right. And not providing a no to that question I asked. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Melissa DeRosa. Thank you for having All me. Right. All right.